Hello students, in this video we'll construct a confidence interval for an unknown variance. Let's suppose that x1 through xn are normally distributed, are samples of a normal distribution. with unknown variance. There, that, that. Sigma x squared. Let's construct a confidence interval for this, for sigma x squared. Okay? And so what we're going to do is we're going to use the sample standard deviation, the sample variance. So recall what the sample variance is. The sample variance is an unbiased estimate of the variance, and that is this. That's f squared, which is 1 over n minus 1, the sum, k goes from 1 up to n, of xk minus xk bar quantity squared. In a previous video, we showed this is an unbiased estimate for the variance. This is an unbiased estimate for sigma x squared, and it has a chi squared n minus 1 distribution has and has a chi squared n minus 1 distribution. Okay, great. And so now what we can do is we know what these chi squared distributions look like. These are supported on the positive half axis. So here's x, and here's my chi squared n minus 1 distribution over here. Looks like this. something like that. That's our distribution. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this number over here. I'm going to look at chi squared alpha over 2. And that's going to be a percentile. That means that their alpha over 2 of the mass is going to be over here in that region. So in that region over there, we have alpha over 2 of the mass. And I'm going to pick this number over here, chi squared of 1 minus alpha over 2. These are percentiles, of course. And of course, then alpha over 2 of the mass is over here. So alpha over 2 of the mass is over there. In other words, the probability that a chi-squared distribution chi is less than chi-squared alpha over 2. This is a percentile. This is going to be equal to alpha over 2. Okay? And in general, if I put a p here, I get a p here. So we see that exactly 1 minus alpha of the mass resides in that sort of that middle hump of this chi-squared distribution. Okay? Great. And so now what can we do? So now we can say that the probability that this test distribution, so we know that this, uh, this thing um, almost has a chi-square distribution, and, and what has a chi-square distribution, and it's going to be n, I have to rescale it by the right thing, n minus 1 squared over s squared sigma squared has a chi-squared n minus 1 distribution, so I have to rescale it. So in other words, that's the thing that has a chi-square distribution. And so what can I say? I can say, therefore, the probability that chi-squared alpha over 2 is less than n minus 1, x of course, n minus 1 s squared over sigma x squared is less than chi squared 1 minus alpha over 2. This probability is 1 minus alpha, so there's our confidence interval over here. So now we just have to isolate chi squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by this statistic n minus 1 s squared. So therefore, the probability that chi alpha over 2 squared over n minus 1 s squared less than 1 over chi squared of x sigma squared of x is less than chi squared 1 minus alpha over 2 over n minus 1 s squared. That probability is 1 minus alpha. And therefore, we're taking the reciprocal of this inequality, we find out what the confidence interval has to be. It's going to be what? It's going to start over here. The inequalities are going to flip when you do the reciprocal. So the interval is going to be what? Chi squared 1 minus alpha over 2 is going to be in the denominator. So let's put that in the denominator over there. So I'm going to flip and get n minus 1 s squared over chi squared 1 minus alpha over 2. That's going to be the bottom limit of my interval. And the top limit of my interval is going to be what? So the top one, this is going to be open interval, of course. So open, like that. The top one is going to be n minus 1 s squared over chi squared alpha over 2. And that is my 100 1 minus alpha confidence interval for sigma x squared. Thank you very much.